for the new people who, who a lot of new people who want to know what this is and, and why it's happening. Can you give us an introduction? Yeah, again, the, the term geoengineering, a.k.a. chemtrails, the, uh, the layman's term for what we see happening in the skies, but this is weather modification on a global scale. In fact, these programs are so large and so all-encompassing that all other weather modification programs that go on on a, on a smaller regional basis are virtually they're negated by the scope and scale of the global geoengineering programs. And, and these programs involve a number of aspects. You have the saturation of the atmosphere with various chemical and metal particulates. And there appear to be various purposes and objectives with this saturation. In conjunction with the saturation, which ionizes the atmosphere, it makes the atmosphere more conductive, we have the HARP facilities, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. These are ionosphere heaters. Many have heard of the HARP facilities. There's not just one or two or three. We believe there's at least 18 around the globe, possibly with three more being built in Antarctica right now. And once the atmosphere is saturated with these particulates and then you add the ionosphere heaters, the entire weather system globally is virtually being thwarted. There is no natural weather at this point, and we really don't know what sort of climate conditions we would have necessarily if these programs were brought to a halt, I and mean, they desperately need to be brought to a halt because the, the, the saturation of the atmosphere is thwarting the hydrological cycle. It's totally disrupting the rain cycle. Again, we have the artificially nucleated snowstorms, which I just mentioned. You can't go from 100 degrees to snow in one day without a whole lot of help. This includes jet stream manipulation with the HARP facilities, and we, and we are not guessing at this. We have monitoring sources for this signal, and we can see where the signal is most intense, and that's what steers the jet stream. So then you add artificial ice nucleation, which is a chemical nucleation process. They can turn what should have been rain into snow and drop the temperatures of these storm systems by this artificial chemical nucleation. This isn't sci-fi. This is hard science fact. The weather disseminating agencies are trying desperately. They're, they're tasked, and they're all owned to at the very top, it appears, by the Rothschilds and or other parts of the global elite complex. Rothschilds, in particular, are ownership of Weather Channel, Weather Central, Weather Underground. And it was imperative that they own these agencies. Otherwise, there would be great discrepancy in trying to explain away these events. This next story is so unbelievable, we didn't think it could possibly be true. But after receiving thousands of records and declassified reports from the Army, it's confirmed that during the Cold War, the United States military conducted secret tests on unsuspecting people in the city of St. Louis. A local sociologist will make her findings public tomorrow, but she spoke first to the I-team's Lisa Zygman. Lisa Martino Taylor's life work has been to uncover details of the Army's ultra-secret military experiments carried out in St. Louis and other cities during the 1950s and 60s. This study was secretive for a reason. Um, they didn't have um, volunteers stepping up and saying, yeah, I'll breathe zinc cadmium sulfide with radioactive particles. And secrecy, um, um, clearly, they went to great lengths to deceive people. By making hundreds of Freedom of Information Act requests, she uncovered once classified documents that confirmed the spraying of zinc cadmium sulfide. The greatest concentration of this compound was sprayed near the Pruitt Igo housing complex just south of downtown St. Louis. It was home to 10,000 low income people, and an estimated 70% were under the age of 12. Martino Taylor claims they all unknowingly inhaled this compound morning, noon, and night so the government could measure its effects on their lungs. So this is in violation of all medical ethics, all international codes, and the military's own policy at that time. There's a lot of evidence that indicates that people in St. Louis, in the city, particularly in minority communities, were um, subje subjected to military tests that was connected to a larger radiological weapons development and testing project. 
For the first time, she links the St. Louis testing to a company called U.S. Radium, a company notorious for lawsuits involving radioactive contamination of its workers. The United States Radium um, had this reputation where they had been legally liable, found legally liable uh, decades prior, for um, producing a radioactive powdered paint that killed many young women who painted fluorescent watch dials. While the Army admits it added a fluorescent substance to the zinc cadmium compound, details of whether it was radioactive remain secret. Documents uncovered to date indicate the Army never conducted follow-up studies to see whether the compound caused long-term health issues. In 1972, after years of crime, poverty, and decline, the government destroyed the pruitt Igo housing complex. Lisa Zygman, News Channel 5, I-Team. Now, the company, U.S. Radium, no longer exists. And as the storm approaches, the high begins to recede, and then they're running the flights back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and literally seeding the leading edges of the cirrus. So the cirrus canopy is accentuated. That cirrus canopy, which would maybe be two or three hundred miles out ahead of a, out ahead of a cold front, is now 400, 450 miles. Based on geoengineering data, it would appear the Pacific Northwest gets an excessive amount of, of the fallout from these programs because much of the weather, much of the precipitation and the storm tracks and the jet stream move across us. So as stated by globally recognized geoengineers like David Keith, that, that that's the type of area they would want to see these particulates as incoming fronts start to uh, cover landfall. And that's exactly what we see here. When there's any kind of incoming front, we see jets everywhere. Weather has always been a strategic desire to control by the generals, whether it was uh, Napoleon marching towards Moscow or Hitler in his Russian campaign, or our own Pacific Fleet trying to uh, understand typhoons and use them uh, for our strategic advantage. War and weather are very closely connected, and they've been connected ever since about 1812 or so, maybe earlier than that. Hannibal had to face the snows in the Alps, and so there's a long history of weather and warfare interactions. Environmental manipulation is like the ultimate um, method of covert warfare because you can literally shut down food production. You can create a situation where the people within a country revolt against their own government and you're invited in to mop up the mess. The issue of owning the weather by 2025, which is a military publication, we've quoted it as far back as I think 94, 95 even. Um, but you go back to these earlier reports and you look at sort of what was the objective. And the objective is exactly that, control the battlefield environment. Uh, environmental factors give you an absolute advantage. Uh, if you can weaken your adversary before you have to fire the first bullet, maybe you even win the war. Whether it's incredibly historic sandstorms when we're invading Iraq, or you want to drought out or flood out a dictator that you're not happy with, It just looks like classic geoengineering to me. Obviously, uh, man-made structures in those cloud formations, probably the dispersion of chemicals, uh, rendering a temperature uh, changing uh, harp-induced situation.
right there is what my guess would be. All I got to say is uh, hats off to the photographer. He really kept uh, his hands still, and he's capturing, and then he's actually capturing a decent enough time to actually see this formation trans transform in front of ourselves and in front of uh, the public right here. This scares me, man. I don't know. It's a terrifying harp induced heating of the atmosphere. I mean, it looks like flames and an actual phenomenon. Look at the cloud formations around it. There, could this be maybe just a real weather phenomenon? I just wondered, how did it have that square edge? I don't understand that square edge. <laughs> The most amazing thing is that that cloud up there, which was generated by the engine, is just a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. It's water vapor. And in about an hour's time, someone in Mississippi is going to get wet washing. It will actually rain. I told you, it's raining. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh. NASA's playing God. It's making its own weather. something you'd see in a video game yeah. on Mario Expressway is so bouncy. 